Hi guys, it's Sunshine and welcome once more to my studio. Right, today we are doing something a little bit different. We're kind of making a deviation away from the art stuff and more going into some writing stuff. Basically, I've gathered together six amazing authors, all very talented humans, and I've asked them six questions, as the name of the episode suggests. <laughs> so what's going to happen is each episode is one question. So they all answer this one question in each episode. And as we go along, there's six episodes and they answer six questions. <laughs> anyway, the dream team is two of the funniest authors I know, Adam Wallace, author of the How to Catch a Series and five times New York Times bestselling author. Adrian oh, Beck, author of Derek Duel Super Cool and the Alien Zoo series. Not to be outdone are these badass book babes. Michelle Worthington, Hi, book fairy and international award winning author. Danica Patterson, hey, author of right. two beautiful kids books, Jacaranda Magic and Scribbly Gum Secrets. Mary Ann De Piers, author of the award winning Sentience of Orion and Peacemaker series. And lastly, Meredith Costain, author of the best selling series, The Ella Diaries. Right, let's get started with the first question. How did you become a kids book author? Now we want to know their personal journeys here. So how they got established through to where they are today. Hey everyone, it is Editing Sunshine here. Hi. <laughs> So I just wanted to interrupt here uh, just to let you guys know that I did all these interviews via Zoom. So if they're a little bit dodgy in filming quality, that is why. <laughs> Plus, most of my authors are in a different state, which is tricky. So Zoom worked the best. Anyway, I will let you get back to the normal filming and viewing. And thing. Okay, so I'm going to hand it off to Adam first. <laughs> Great question, Sunshine. I became a kids book author. Do you know what? It was actually, it started as a dare. Ooh. I hadn't actually written for 10 years after school. I became an engineer and I got dared to write a children's book by my girlfriend at the time who said she had to, who was doing a children's book for her uni course and she had to mm -hmm. write an illustrate. And I'm like, that's really cool. She's like, anyone can write a children's book, which is what people say. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, I couldn't. She goes, I bet you could. I said, bet I couldn't. And we had a $10 bet. And so I wrote it. It was kind of terrible. It was it was called Blip. It was about this little creature who looked like a raindrop and lived down next to a sand pit and he met this kid and anyway, pretty average. Half in prose, half in rhyme. But I just had I finished and went, oh my god, where have you been all my life? To the to the story, not to my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, then I was just hooked. And so then I did The Artist's Way and I did a couple of sort of, on the moment online, I did a couple of picture book making courses, just day long mm -hmm. things. And I created a kid's book, which is great. And I just wrote every single day. And for the next eight years, I sent off stories and to publishers and got rejected about 150 times, I think. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So then I went, um, doing it myself. And so I self-published a book called Better Out Than In and that was my first book and that was how it kind of all started. How did I become a kids book author? Well, mm. I've been wanting to be a kids book author, I think since I was a kid, but I didn't really think that kids from Hobart in Tasmania could ever become <laughs> authors. Like we never had author visits when I was a kid. So mm. I just never really thought of it as a valid option. But then I sort of came to Melbourne and I worked in TV for a while. And I met a friend of mine called Shane Crawford, who's a Hawthorne legend, used to play footy. And I put two and two together and I thought maybe I could write a kid's book collaborating with Shane. And maybe that would be a great way to kick off my illustrious career. And so we came up with a, a concept together, Kick It to Nick, uh, which was about a, a kid who plays footy uh, for his school team, but the oval is cursed. So whenever they try and play footy, some sort of weird footy based monster tries to uh, attack them. And so not only do they have to work together as a team, they have to win the game. They also had to save the day from the monster. So we thought we came up with a pretty cool idea. And uh, then we pitched it and lo and behold, we got an eight book series out of it, which we were really, really excited about. Wow. 
And I think sometimes all you really need to do is get your foot in the door and once you meet people and then you try and be nice enough that they wouldn't totally hate working with you again, <laughs> <laughs> then um, that can sometimes help. So uh, off that, I got to meet a few people um, and people move around. So we were with Penguin and then some of the people that were working with Penguin, you know, they move off into other areas as well. So suddenly you've got contacts all over the place, which is kind of really handy. And I've been publishing with Penguin ever since, right up until my most recent books with Penguin is the Derek Dool super cool series and i think the key to keeping uh, your publishing career going is just making sure that you are aware of the market and are aware of what your strengths are and i think that what i learned from doing those first books was i'm good with action scenes and i'm good with like kooky funny stuff and so i've sort of tried to zero in on that a fair bit and that's why I, from that then till now i've done a lot of sporty books i've done champion charlie's i've done a whole bunch of different um footy type things. And now I'm doing the uh, the Derek Duell series, which has zeroed in on the funny stuff. So if you can sort of find your niche and you're sort of yeah. aware enough, self-aware enough to work out what that is, because sometimes it takes a bit of time to work that out, then if you can find your niche and you can convince others that that's your niche, then that, I think that's <laughs> half the battle. So I was able to get uh, funny books happening and um, I was able to pitch Derek Dool Super Cool, which again, is sort of based on, it's really me. You've got to do something that's really you. <laughs> and so I based it on me trying to be cool when I was a kid. Um, and pretty much I said, this is just me as a primary school student. And they seemed to believe me. and. <laughs> I can understand why because it was, it was actually quite true um, and so I said I've got millions and millions of stories about me being desperate to be cool from when I was a kid. Uh, it needs to be a series and fortunately they said yes we can see that there's some potential in that um, and so yeah the rest is history. So my tip would be find out what you're really really good at you know try a lot of different things but find out what you're really good at what your strengths are and then just make that your brand and go for it. Hi, Sunshine. Well, um, I became a, a kids' book author when my sons were, I think, the ages of three, seven, and nine. And I'd always fiddled around with writing as I, when I was younger and never been really serious about it. But then it came back at that age, and I really wanted to write things that they would be interested in. So um, the first thing I thought is, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm going to go and do a course. And I went into uh, do a children's writing course in somebody's back room. In fact, I think it was actually underneath their house. And there was about six, six of us. And she taught me um, a lot about characters, like how to draw characters, um, not to draw them, to draw them as a writer, not to draw them as an illustrator. Um, and we talked about the kinds of things that children was children were interested in and how to get into a kid's point of view. That was really important, I think, because a lot of adults come into writing children's books thinking like adults instead of like being in the mindset of the child. So that was that was great. I learned so much from that that little um, under house, that <laughs> under house course that I did. Um, and then as my children grew up, I moved into writing young adult fiction, um, the things that were interesting that, um, for them then um, and I wrote my Burn Bright series which was um, you know about the difficulties of growing up and finding out who you are and then as they got into adulthood um, I'd always been interested and wanted to write adult fiction and I was reading a lot of science fiction at that time so I had uh, I was fortunate enough to get an agent who took me on board for my first series uh, science fiction series in fact that's such a great story in terms of you know sending manuscripts out and you know being rejected over and over again and then finally getting that call one day that said well you know that book um, they want to buy it and can you write two more <laughs> so uh, yeah I kind of I think I should probably uh, thank my children because they were, the, they were the model that I followed as I was beginning to write. How did I become a children's book author? Okay, well, I was actually lucky enough to grow up in a house that was full of books. And it was a bit of a mad house too. There were a lot of mad people. We walked around reciting a lot of poetry, mainly by people like A.A. Milne, the Pooh Guy, or uh, C.J. Dennis, Walter de la Mer. 
we'd write little plays and put them up with our cousins across the fence, <laughs> stuff like that. So my head was always full of rhythm and rhyme. I just presumed everybody else's was too. So it wasn't long before I was writing my own stories. I used to ride my bike to school along the banks of the Bunyip River and while I was riding I had lots of ideas for stories and poems would jump into my head and I'd come home and scribble them up. So when I was about eight I actually had a poem published in the age newspaper. It was the junior section <laughs> of the age but the thing was that they paid me for it and I thought wow you can get paid for doing what you love to do. So I made a little vow to myself um, and I thought I'm going to grow up and become a kids, a real kids author and I actually even picked up a pen name for myself and then I thought well I have to make this happen. So I kept writing all through school and high school, maybe not so much at uni, other things happened. <laughs> um, and then eventually I thought I better get on with this so I sent a kids story off to uh, a magazine that the education department put out, kids magazine, and they took it. And then they said, could you write some more for the younger magazine? So I thought, wow, this is great. So I kept doing that and then I thought, yeah, life is good. And then I went da -da -da -dum, to Paris. Paris is the answer to how did I become a kids book author? Because I got knocked down by a car on the pedestrian crossing. <laughs> and while I was there surrounded by ambulance officers and things like that, I thought, life is too short not to do what you really want to do. So I thought, I better stop working and start writing, get on with it. So when I came back, that's what I did. I quit my job. I started sending stuff off. Um, I had first books I had published were in the Dolly Fiction series. Um, and then because I was still writing lots of uh, articles and stories for the kids magazines, that was like a real apprenticeship. So I learned how to write to a brief, use a word count, hook kids in very quickly um, and then it just took off. So I started writing chapter books and series fiction and novelizations of TV shows like Heartbreak High. Dance Academy, some commercial fiction for things like Barbie. <laughs> and for, for Barbie, I actually uh, used a pen name and I can't tell you what it is or I'd have to kill you. <laughs> That's the short answer. Ah, how did I become a kid's book author? Well, when I was six years old, I was sure I wanted to be a kid's book author. And then I grew up a little bit and got distracted a lot and sort of put that dream on the back burner for a few too many decades. And uh, after I had kids myself and was plunged back into the world of picture books, um, I fell in love with them all over again and thought, hold on, when I was six, I had the right idea for what I wanted to be all along. So I picked up that dream and dusted it off and I started taking myself to conferences and joining writing groups and putting myself out there a little bit. Uh, I learnt fairly early in the process, I was given a piece of wonderful advice um, by a few different authors actually, um, not to pitch to the same publisher if my style was quite varied, which I was beginning to understand that it was. So I had to look very carefully at a number of different publishers, um, some specific to picture books, um, you know, some that were dedicated to chapter books, and really target my applications in that way. So I did a lot of research. I probably spend more time or spent more time and still spend more time researching publishers and understanding what might be a good fit rather than creating stories, which is actually mm. what I like to spend all my time doing. I chose, I think it was three publishers that I thought I would really love to work with based on the sort of stories that I write and the sort of books that they publish. Um, so I sort of started researching everything and refined it down to a top three um, okay. and the manuscripts out to multiple publishers, but not every publisher because I knew that every publisher wouldn't suit my work. So three and I got radio silence from two and I came across in that process a lovely little Australian publisher called Paul Collins, who owns Board Street Publishing. And I sent a manuscript to him. And he tried to say no a few times, but he wasn't, didn't really sound sure when he said no, so I kept checking in with him 
which he loved. And eventually uh, he agreed to publish my very first picture book uh, in 2018, which is Jack Random Magic. Great question. How did I become a children's book author? Okay, so when my biggest boy was born, we went to the bookstore and we were looking at all the books for kids and I was thinking, you know what, there's not really the type of books here that I loved when I was growing up. It wasn't really anything like Wombat Stew or Possum Magic and I thought mm -hmm. I would really like to have a go at writing some stories because I used to love writing stories when I was younger. So I did, I, I tried to write a story and it took me 10 years to get <laughs> my first book to book published because I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know that I could ask for help. I didn't know um, the right thing to do. Uh, and finally, I got my very first picture book published, which was actually based on a poem that I wrote when oh, I was in amazing. grade five. So I think I've always been a picture book author, but I only just started when I had kids of my own. Thank you so much to our incredible authors. That was absolutely brilliant. We will have you back next time. <laughs> now, my thoughts. I love personal stories. Personal stories are my jam. I was struck today by how different everyone's personal story was, but there was a lot of similarities behind them all. One of the things I found most interesting is that each of them took time to become an author. Like it it, it seemed, seems to take a lot of time and hard work to do an author thing. <laughs> and I think that's to be expected, but I think people often come into the publishing industry expecting their stuff to get published straight away. So it's really interesting to hear from these massive, amazing, incredible authors. It took time for them to become big. And often it doesn't happen when you have your first book out or even your second book out, but hopefully eventually it will happen. And I think that was really cool. I also really enjoyed that um, some of them really put an emphasis on getting help, you know, or asking for help. And this industry is such an amazing industry for that. You know, you ask for help and people will give it. People are nice in the kids' book industry. It's awesome. <laughs> but advice like, you know, going to writers' courses and going to conferences like Kid Lit Vic or even joining Facebook groups and writing groups with your peers, you know, that can be a massive help. And I love that because this is such community-based industry. Um, not only are you meeting other people that are super excited about what you're excited in, but also you're going to meet the publishers, you're going to meet the people that actually matter and can publish your book. This is all really interesting from an illustration perspective because some things are really different to how like I started as an illustrator, but some things are actually really similar and it's nice to see that comparison between author and illustrators. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> if you're an aspiring writer, some of the authors that we had on today actually do like courses and more stuff to help you develop on your journey to becoming a writer. So go have a look at the linky links below. I will have a little bit more information on these specific courses and things that these authors run uh, a little bit later on in the, the series. So keep a look out, but for now, go have a look at the links. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to see more of my work, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook as usual. And I'm still twitching on a Friday night at 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Keep your eyes peeled for next week's episode as well, because that's all about finding inspiration in your work. From myself and all of today's authors. Hey, thanks for having me. Hi, sunshine. <laughs> we will see you soon. Stay safe and keep on painting or writing in this case. <laughs> Bye.